this unbelievably beautiful goddess on two legs. If I ever see this woman in the streets, it's on sight. Period. We're fighting. I don't care. The disrespect, because what did I do to you? This is the second time, ma'am, you've had me crying in the cinema house. Boo-hoo crying over this movie. Acting like I'm so strong. I still cry over my girl. All right, so I just saw The Wild Robot. Let's talk about it. This is an animated film directed by Christopher Sanders with the voice talents of her, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Catherine O'Hara, Bill Nye, Pedro Pascal, Kit Connor, and other people. This is about a robot that crash lands on some mysterious island and has to, in a sense, adapt to its surroundings while also maintaining its own identity. There were some elements of Frankenstein in the storytelling, just the way the monster is just trying to be, you know, peaceful with everything and everyone and everyone's afraid and running for their lives. And this monster is just like robot. It's just like, this is who and what I am and ends up teaching itself, you know, the language of the creatures around it so that it can communicate. Very, very Frankenstein. I'm gonna be real here. I really wish I had studied animation more, just animation film in general in college because animation in terms of reviewing animated films, not my strong suit. Um, I don't always really know what to look for. I'm not always sure what standard. I just know what looks good to me. And also, you know, just listening to other people, I have a good idea of what looks good according to like industry standard. But I, I can't quite, I haven't quite internalized that so that I can Spit it out and make it make sense, if that makes sense. But that was gorgeous. I mean, just the animation by itself. Let's just start there. Gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. There's a moment where she puts her hand on a tree and butterflies just start flying. The color, oh, the attention to detail, just absolutely stunning. It's crazy how much emotion is in this movie when our protagonist, the one we're following, is a robot who doesn't really have much of a face. So there's not much emotion we're, we're gauging emotion based on you know eyes and the squinting of the eyes the roundness of the eyes and body language but not much face and as human beings we're programmed to notice people's faces it's a survival instinct which is very ironic considering that this movie is in a sense about um survival instincts and almost a a, a fable about human nature in general how we are built to be a certain way but we have opportunity to be more than that. She ends up finding this goose egg and hatches the goose egg and the goose egg imprints on the robot named Roz and she becomes a mom and that's where I started crying and I did not stop. In terms of agenda, message pushing, stuff like that, because I know for a lot of parents that is a big concern, there is a little bit of climate changey in here, but nothing like, you know, preachy. It kind of reminds me a bit of Wally, -E, more so like this could happen if, you know, kind of deal. Not so more like we're preaching to you and you have to believe what we're saying, but kind of think of Wally -E in that respect. An absolutely beautiful image of the Golden Gate Bridge underwater. I mean, the thought is not beautiful, but the way they did that with the whales going, it's just gorgeous. So this is set in almost a dystopian future uh, where they're still making life happen and robots are now part of human life. We've seen a lot of movies like that where robots become part of human life. But usually when we see movies like that, there are consequences, negative consequences um, where the robots step out of their programming and it's a bad thing they take over right think of like iRobot with Will Smith but this movie kind of switches that a little bit a little bit where a robot steps out of its programming and it's a good thing and it's a beautiful thing good lord the anime I can't get over it just stunning absolutely beautiful the trailer doesn't do it justice that was just so pretty Chris Sanders our writer and director um this is not his first rodeo so he directed how to train your dragon um i think one or both of the uh crude movies he was also the director for lilo and stitch and he is the voice of stitch so there is evidence i think in both the animation and the storytelling of just seasoning you know wisdom the animation is just wise i don't know how to make that make sense but it's just wise 
Animation aside, this is another one of those like good cross-generational movies where it's perfect for kids because it's a very simple story, easy to follow. A reminds me a little bit of the movies that we watched growing up, which were harsh in a way, but they, you know, helped us understand and explore harsh realities of the world. The circle of life plays an interesting role in this, um, but in a very palatable way in a way that makes sense and that we can understand and, and digest, that's not really all that traumatizing. It, it's funny in a way, but it's one of those things where you watch it again when you're older and it's a much clearer picture. That being said, if you are an older person, whether that's over the age of 13 or you know over the age of 35, you're definitely gonna find this enjoyable because number one, it's beautiful to look at too. It's a very simple, easy to understand story, not a whole lot of characters clogging up the screen. So very simple cast. And it's just a beautiful homage. I don't know if this was intentional or not, but it's a, a beautiful homage to motherhood. As this little gosling, this baby goose grows, um, her body falls apart and that's such a mother because mothers sacrifice so much of their bodies when it comes to raising their children and, and she's just falling apart and even as she's falling apart she is giving as much as she can to the bitter end um, why wow, you make me cry this is an exploration of love in a very mechanical um, an almost easy to understand kind of way, the way love comes from the inside out, how it builds and how we engage with it. Um, but I think at this core, this is a movie for mothers and just almost a thank you letter to moms and all that they do and the sacrifices they make and just an acknowledgement that there is no rule book and there is no manual. You kind of make it up as you go and you figure it out and you give everything that you have and then your kids get older and they don't need you as much and they, they figure out their place in the world and the tragedy that comes with that because this is your baby. You grew this thing. I mean, she didn't grow this gosling, but she hatched it and she provided a home for this gosling, taught the gosling how to swim the best she could. Uh, taught the gosling how to fly the best she could and everything did everything that this baby needed to do for survive to survive and if that's not motherhood I don't know what is I mean you have this this task at hand this child your job is to raise it and prepare it for the world and you do that to the best of your ability and you hope and pray it all works out and you hope you get the opportunity to see the fruits of your labor beautiful beautiful but I didn't have to cry that much I cried so much. I like just I do this thing where I don't want to cry where I just poke out my bottom lip and try to stop the tears but then the ugly cry just starts being a little too ugly for my taste and I just have to kind of let it flow the last time this woman made me cry was in June um a quiet place day one I cried this movie is basically a, a simple sentence to mothers. I don't know if that was their intention, but that's what came across. It's just a simple sentence. You're doing a good job. You're doing the best you can, and it's enough. But that was, that was good. That was so freaking good. Uh, perfect for the whole family. 10 out of 10. Amazing. One of the best I've seen all year. Hands freaking down.